day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. This morning, we want to talk about godly recall, remembering the Lord, remembering the Lord, remembering God, godly recall, godly recall, godly recall is uh, total recall, amen, uh, that's all we need to remember, we need to remember how God brought us out, we even need to remember some of the sins that we committed, and yet God forgave us, the children of Israel, um, and Moses in Deuteronomy uh, 9, around starting at around verse 7 and on through uh, 10, uh, 11, uh, he, uh, Moses reminds them of how they had built the idol, the calf in the wilderness while God was leading them and they had built a calf and they felt that they were um, actually... Uh, honoring God by that. They built a bull, the, the statue of a bull, the golden statue of a bull. Uh, to, 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 they thought that was showing God's strength. But remember, God had told them, do not make any graven images, no wooden images, nor anything that you uh, point to and say, that is God, because it is idolatry. He said, I will not tolerate idolatry, anything you put up um, that is material is going to come short of me. And and so God uh, was angered by this. And um, he, uh, what God did, he was provoked to wrath and um, he was angry. And so Moses uh was so angry, he came down, he had come down from Mount Sinai and he broke the tablets that uh, the commandments had been uh, uh, written on, had been engraved upon. And um, he had to go back up and God re uh, redid them for him, did them over again. And uh, God forgave the people. He led them in the wilderness. Now, they weren't able to go into the promised land, uh, that group, but their children were. Um, but here, they're getting ready to go into the promised land, and Moses is reminding them. He's saying, remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. Now, I don't like to remember my sins, but and that, that, that kind of makes me ashamed. Uh, and maybe you don't like that evil uh, either. But um, as forgiven people, our sins are past and uh, thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. And there's nothing, while there's nothing spiritual about wallowing in guilt every now and then, we need to revisit the times of our golden calves, the times of our uh, idolatry and putting other things before God, because that is what idolatry is. Um, God had delivered his people out of slavery, yet they wanted to worship an idol. And yet the Bible says look, in um, um, Deuteronomy 10, 1, at that time, the Lord said, at that time when Israel overtly rejected him, uh, God told Moses to return to the mountain there, God gave Moses new tablets containing his law. And at that time, God also said, go and lead my people on their way so that they may enter and possess the land that I swore to them. Moses reminded Israel of the golden calf, not to shame them, but to help them realize how great and how gracious God is. This is why we need to revisit our past sins sometimes. This is why, because what we've done when we sin, uh, we forget God. When we sin, we put something before God. And to remember how forgiving, how loving, how gracious God has been to us, we need to think on those things. At that time in our lives, the times of our greatest failure, 
God came to us in the, in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus lifted us up. Jesus took us in his arms. Jesus forgives us and set us on our way again. And so revisiting those times when we put all these other things before God that not even uh, reminds us that not even our sins can cut us off from the love of God. Whenever we fail, whenever we get tripped up, God is able to pick us up again and set us on the path of righteousness once again. And I want to quote John in leaving in, in concluding this morning. He says here in John, 1 John verse uh, chapter 1, verses 9 through 22, he said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, he says, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus the Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. God bless you and keep you. Let us remember the Lord. Let us uh, have a godly recall today as we go forth so we also may have mercy on all those we come in contact with and be that light, be that Christ, amen, that, on, that the only Christ that they will see is in us. God bless you and keep you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for godly we call. We thank you, Lord, for your graciousness to us throughout the years. We thank you, Lord, for being our God and, and, and leading us in the way of everlasting. We thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, for your, 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 your companionship, your, your loving grace, Lord God. Lord, continue, Lord, with us as we go along the path of this life, as we follow you in the way, touch us that we may be your representatives and ambassadors right now, that others may look and see you in us and be drawn to you as the moth is to the flame. We'll be careful to give you glory, honor, and majesty, dominion, and power to you and belongs to you and you alone. In the mighty matchless name, nature, and character of Jesus, we pray. We say together, amen, amen, amen. God bless each and every one of you. It's good to see you all this morning. Um, I was a little late this morning. Please forgive me. We're going to remedy that. We're going to be starting and trying to start a, uh, at 7 or very soon after. Uh, you all be blessed today. Go on your way with God today and be and remember his presence is always with you. Amen. And remember this, Pastor Phil loves you, but God loves you infinitely more. Be blessed. Take care.